Assalamu alaikum. The recent pandemic has caused many people's incomes to drop and has created a lot of uncertainty about the future. Moreover, this pandemic has demonstrated just how unpredictable the economy can be and how quickly things can change. In this video, I'm going to share four tips for remaining financially prosperous regardless of what the economy throws at you. So without further ado, let's get started. The first piece of advice is a pretty straightforward piece of advice, but it is perhaps one of the most effective things and most effective habits that you can get into. And that is to simply live within your means. Living within your means is one of those things that you're either going to do voluntarily or eventually you're going to be forced to do anyway. So you might as well do it voluntarily and preserve your dignity and self-respect in the process. Now, the first step to living within your means is to figure out how you're living currently. Now, most people know their income, but not all people track exactly where they are spending their money. So to figure out whether or not you're living within your means, you need to track all of the expenses that you're incurring and categorize them as either needs or wants. So what I mean by needs are things that you can't do without, things like shelter, healthcare, utilities, and food. Wants are things that you can do without, they're discretionary items. So for example, going out or taking a vacation or buying a video game. These are all wants, expenses that you choose to incur, but you don't necessarily need to. Now, to make this process easier, there are a lot of apps that will help you track your expenses. Mint is one of the apps that I've used that I've had a good experience with. Investopedia has a good list of some of the best budgeting apps, and I'll leave a link to their page in the description. Now, once you've tracked where your money is going and how much you're spending on needs versus wants, the next step is to trim the fat where needed. A good rule of thumb when you're budgeting is the 50-30-20 rule. And this rule basically says that 50% of your income should go to needs, 30% should go to wants, and 20% should go to savings and investments. Now, keep in mind, this is a rule of thumb, so you want to make sure that it makes sense for your specific circumstance. So if you're a high earner and, for example, you're bringing in $20,000 after tax every month, then you don't necessarily need to spend 30% of that or $6,000 a month on things that you just want. Probably you'd be able to get by just well spending less than that and saving more, for example. Personally, how I do it is I start with what I want to save and invest, and then I work backward to figure out how much I can spend on things that I want. Now, as a Muslim, in your budget for savings and investment, you need to account for sadaqah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, ma naqasat sadaqatun min malin, which means never has wealth been decreased by charity. So sadaqah or giving to charity is one of the best investments you can make. As a Muslim, we don't just invest for this life, but we invest for the hereafter as well. And sadaqah is one of the best investments you can make. So make sure you are planning for sadaqah, you're planning for charity in your budget. Don't leave it to chance. So if you hear a moving khutbah about giving to charity or some cause, then you give to charity. And if you don't hear a khutbah in a long time, you forget about it. No, budget your sadaqah, plan for it, and then automate it. Additionally, you're going to use your savings and investment budget to pay down any debt that you have. So obviously there are minimum debt payments that you have to make. Those are in the need part of your budget. Those are non-discretionary payments that you have to make. But in terms of what you pay above your minimum payments, those come from the savings and investment part of your budget. And this brings me to my second tip to always be financially prosperous, and that is to rid your life from debt. 
Now, obviously, the best way to rid your life of debt is to never get into debt in the first place. And the primary tool that's going to enable you to not get into debt in the first place is to follow the first piece of advice that I mentioned, which is to live within your means. However, if you do find yourself having fallen into debt for whatever reason, then you need to prioritize getting out of debt as soon as possible. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to regularly supplicate, Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from sin and heavy debt. And keep in mind, paying off your debt is not only a worldly consideration, but one for the afterlife as well. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The soul of the believer is suspended by its debt, until it is paid off. Now, it's important to mention here, while you're paying off your debt, the 20% minimum that we said should be allocated towards savings and investment, and from which will come the payments to eliminate your debt. Part of that should also be used to build a cash cushion so that if you have an unexpected expense, you don't have to go into debt to cover that expense. So you want to pay off your debt while building a reasonable cash cushion so that if an unexpected expense arises, you don't have to go into debt in order to cover that expense. With paying off your debt, my stance is that the more aggressive you are, the better. And I hope everyone who is indebted, inshallah, is able to liberate themselves from their indebtedness. The third piece of advice in order to remain financially prosperous is to continue your education and refine your skills. I know it's cliche, but one of the best investments you can make is an investment in yourself. Having a skill that you can sell on your own is freedom. Skillshare is a great platform for learning new marketable skills. I'll leave a link to their site in the description of this video. Even if you have regular employment, make sure you have a side hustle that you earn some money from. So that in case you lose your main employment, you can fall back on this side hustle and make it your main hustle or just keep it your side hustle while you are continuing to look for employment so that you avoid your income falling to zero. The fourth piece of advice to remain financially prosperous is to be appreciative. No amount of financial prosperity will make you feel content, will make you feel prosperous if you're mentally not in the right space. To a certain extent, you are poor to the extent that you feel you are poor and you are prosperous to the extent that you feel you are prosperous. Now, obviously, there are some things that would be objectively detrimental to your well-being. So an absence of, you know, decent shelter or health care or food. Obviously, these are necessities that people need. However, many people have the necessities that they need and they don't feel appreciation for what they have. Listen to this very beautiful hadith. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever among you wakes up in the morning secure in his dwelling and secure in his family, healthy in his body, having his food for the day, then it is as if the entire world has been given to him. Now, who among us wake up with nothing in their body hurting and secure in their house, secure regarding their family, have the food that they need for the day and feel like the entire world has been given to them. And if we don't have this feeling, why don't we have this feeling? What else is there in this world to have anyway? I think one of the big problems that prevents us from feeling the appreciation that we should for the countless blessings that we have is that we constantly compare ourselves to others. We may be feeling fine, but then we log on to social media, we go on Instagram, we see other people's very well choreographed and very well filtered pictures. And all of a sudden, we're not as appreciative of the things that we have 
than we were before we saw these pictures, before we compared ourselves to others. Comparing yourself to others is an endless source of discontent. Being appreciative of what we have is an endless source of wealth and satisfaction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the generous Quran says the following. After Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَإِذْ تَأَزَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَإِزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَزَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ if you are grateful, I will certainly give you more. And if you are ungrateful, my punishment is truly severe. Now, a routine that I've been trying to be consistent with in order to get my mind in the habit of always being appreciative is that after I wake up, after Salat al-Fajr, I try to think of 10 things that I'm very appreciative of. And sometimes I will do this exercise with my wife. We'll try and think of 10 things that we're very appreciative of. And if we want to challenge ourselves, we'll think of 10 things that we're very appreciative of that we've never mentioned in the past. And this is something that I would encourage you to try out yourself because once you get in the habit of being appreciative, you start becoming happier, you start to feel luckier. And what's great is that this happiness, this feeling of content is not dependent on anything material. So long as you're in this habit mentally, you'll always have this feeling. This is something that you can hold on to and you can feel regardless of your level of wealth. So that would be my fourth piece of advice if you want to always stay rich. So if you live within your means, you live debt free, you are always working on yourself, continuing your education and refining your skills, and you are appreciative for what you have, I think you have a really high chance of remaining rich, remaining financially prosperous inside and out, regardless of what the economy throws at you. I hope you found this video beneficial. If you liked anything in this video, I'd appreciate a like. Speaking of appreciation, subscribe for more content like this. If you're looking to buy stocks in the United States, check out M1 Finance, link in the description to support the channel. Until next time, make sure to take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you all.